and welcome to the He Doesn't Want a Podcast. This week, the podcast is sponsored by Learner Trust Training School and Drumble Park Racecourse. I'm here with uh, Michael Moore, who is an Ayla McGee player. Michael, how's things? Yeah, not too bad, guy. Yourself? Not bad, mate. Not bad. I'm, I'm off work at the moment, so getting plenty of these interviews in. So. Yep. Are you on furlough again? Aye, uh, back to furlough. <laughs> um, well, it isn't, isn't such a bad thing when you can have things like this on the side. Yeah, that's bit. very true, isn't it? Uh, what about yourself, mate? Are you, are you still playing the way this year? Or were you straight yeah, away before all this happened? Yeah, we were obviously a, very, a lot longer pre-season than usual, obviously with the pandemic going on, etc. Um, but it's just so frustrating at the minute. It's like you play, we played one game and then all of a sudden it's just stopped again and you're in four-week lockdown. You don't really know. There's no, You don't know what's going to happen, really, do you? Yeah, well, there's... Uh... There's news this week that the Amateur League are going to have a AGM again this yeah. Wednesday coming. So yeah. hopefully after Wednesday we'll have at least something to look forward to. A wee, bit of, a wee bit of clarification, yeah. I'm, yeah. Because I'm, we, I'll be honest, I'm not too, um, I'm not too hopeful. So there's still them um, two appeals to go into, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And then once they come through, then it's it's whether or not then we can even play next season. Or uh, the, the last lockdown we had was meant to be three weeks. And it lasted 13 weeks or something. So <laughs> we'll see how long this four, four week lockdown lasts anyway. So I know, I know. Um, but the, the main thing is we keep ourselves taking over and we prepare That's for it. anything that does happen if it does um, if it does start eventually. Yeah. Um, so in terms of you, your career in general, um, bring us back to the start. Where did you start your youth play? Your- I started playing for a local team, uh, St. Nicholas's Boys. I went to St. Nicholas's Primary School. It was mainly just friends like under... I think it was under 10. I, was, I think I was 8. Yeah. Playing there for 2 or 3 years. Uh, mainly all local ones from the school and a couple of coaches. And to be fair, it was it was brilliant. We won a couple of trophies, obviously, in the Down and Connor Leagues. And and then I moved to play there. Sort of, the players were a wee bit short, like short of players. And I went to, I went to high school in Lauren. And I signed for, I went and joined Inver Colts. Yeah, I might have been fifteen. I think it was fifteen then. Yeah, fourteen or fifteen. I think it was fifteen, and I'd just been signed for Cart Rangers when I was fifteen. Right. Um, I played a few games for the reserves, and I was playing one morning. For a funny story for actually, playing one morning for Ember Colts, and we happened to be playing Cart Rangers, uh, under fifteen. I'm assuming I think it was, and we beat them nine one, and I scored six, and I got a phone call that night. From Davy Hildage, you know Davy. He used to do obviously do car games as chairman yeah. at that stage. Yeah. And Davy was ringing me, giving off, and I was like, Davy, I was remember cold as youth football, etc. And he's like, Oh, you're playing for Lauren Youth and bloody blah, blah, and you can't be seen to play for Lauren against car. And I'm like, they're not affiliated to Lauren Youth whatsoever, or the Lauren at all. That was Lauren yeah. Youth was affiliated to Lauren. But he obviously got his wires crossed, and he was on giving off sex, basically playing for the Lauren Youth team against the car Youth team, but it was completely different teams all the color. But then after then. I got brought onto the first team and it was just, I don't know if it was 15 or 16, I can't actually remember. Yeah. So then I, I'd, I'd stop playing for Ember Culture and just focus full time at Carrick. I was very young for the when the senior football as well. Yeah, yeah. It. That's, uh, that's, it's probably helped me, I suppose, playing with grown men for so young. Yeah. It was always quite like it was always quite big and bulky even when I was younger. Um, I didn't feel it. It wasn't as much as a challenge maybe it probably could have been. Like uh, physicality wise, but yeah. you no, know, it was a great learning curve and some great players. Like in them days, whenever I was just young, 15, 16. But yeah. I played a few games for the reserves, and then I went into the first team. I think it was I can't even remember. I don't know it's late fifteen or just turned sixteen. I can't remember. Yeah, it's still even though physically you were a lot more advanced than people your age, but it's probably why you found it so easy scoring six against Kayak Reserves that day, or Kayak under 15s, but um, it's still even just a massive difference to move. Uh, like, you only played a couple of reserve team games, there was no under 18 football, just no, straight No, it was nothing then, it was just, I went, when I was like 15, I went to the reserve, played the reserves, and then I went into the, the senior football, obviously, and then after about maybe 10 or 12 games, can't remember. Yeah, there, there's a lot more um, progression these days, whereas oh, I, I remember was... as well, it was under 16 and then senior football. That was it. That was, was the no end days. It was under 16s yeah. and then you went to the reserve team. And then, but now you have 16s, 17s, 18s. 
20, 23s or whatever it is. Yeah, but, you have to grow up quickly in those days. <laughs> yeah, and to be fair, guys, I think it actually, not necessarily think the quality's different now, but you look yeah. a lot a lot of years ago, I would say like it probably helped a lot of players, not, not talking about myself, I mean other players, Yeah, like going straight from maybe 16-year-olds straight into the first team or into the reserve teams, and I think it makes them a better player. You sort of, you grew up quicker, as you say. Yeah, you you know, they, they learned a lot of things quicker and became more streetways. Whereas yeah. now you see kids, 15, 16, and half the time they just want to play their place, isn't I know. I know. You and know you start mean? to find as well, like the, the younger kids coming into senior teams, they're, they're a lot more immature than what they maybe you, would have been. You can't say boo to them. So yeah. <laughs> they just, I know I'm, I know I can be a bit, a bit harsh and a bit hard on people, but kids 17, 18, 19, you can't even say, you say a boo to them, they go and tell their dad. Uh, as a coach as well, so you have to change because sure I tough, grew up. I, know. I grew up around amateur league football, where, where junior football, where it was just it was a lot more hardened. I thought back then, whereas yeah, now I the, the mentalities have changed, attitudes have changed. We but you have to, you have to yeah. soften your approach a lot as a coach as well. You have 100%, to really adapt 100%. as much as you can. And but then I it's that last for you year. as a player, a leader in the change room as well, it can be hard. Well, I found that last year whenever I had to do was doing being player manager. Mm-hmm. You, sometimes you have to maybe watch what you say as much. Like yeah. The way, not necessarily what you say, but the way you say it to some people, because yeah. you just may as well have, they may as well be standing beside you watching if you if you say that to them nowadays. Yeah, it's the hardest thing as well. The gauge players how they're going to react to certain things as well because well, definitely you, you don't know until they get a, you until you get a bad reaction. I, mean, I always <laughs> find I always find myself I uh, I nearly preferred somebody shouting at me. Rather yeah. than somebody saying, like, blowing smoke up your bum. Yeah. I'd rather somebody sort of shout that, you know, like, well, I'll just prove him wrong. But now you shout at people and they just go and hide in the shell. I know, it's big time. Uh, in terms of Carrick, uh, how long did you stay at Carrick for them? Were, I was at, were you in their first team set up for a while? Or? Yeah, I played, it was, I was 16, I was in the first team properly under Alan Campbell. It was Alan brought me in. Yeah. And then I played under NATO Best, I think was next, and then Paul Mooney. That's when we won a trophy under Paul Mooney. It was, it was a great save. Very good yeah. save, actually. A lot of boys up from the West, up your neck of the woods, like Paul yeah. Bradley, uh, Michael McLean, uh, Liam Hartley and Nets. Yeah. Uh, f- a few other players, you know, a lot of good players. Yeah, they and, all done uh, well at DC as well, those boys. Paul, so Paul, Mc, yeah. Paul McDuck was another one. Paul McDonald was another one. Yeah, McDuck, yeah. Uh, Gavin McChrystal was there too. Yeah. Gavin Trainer was there, you know, when I was first coming through. Yeah. But a lot of good players up from all came from down the west and all good lads. Like I'm still be friendly with most of them now. Uh-huh. And then they at that stage what, you were being in your early twenties then? No, no, I think it was sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. I think the last card when it was either nineteen or twenty, I can't remember. Right. Scott Graham McConnell was a manager and sent off away to Battle of Mallard. Um yeah. for apparently scoring up the referee or it was a bad tackle and he sent me off. I ended up getting 12 matches or something and just sort of sort of lost interest. That's when I went to Aidan yeah. McGee. I first went to Aidan McGee I just sort of lost a bit of interest and then I came back to Carrick and then I went to Lawn and back to Carrick again and then went to Aidan McGee finally. Dropping back down Aidan McGee originally was that uh, is Aidan McGee your hometown is it? Yeah. No, no I live in Carrick. You live in Carrick, like, right? Carrick, you just have a lot can, of friends at Adam McGee. You can nearly see, you can nearly see Carrick from my house, the ground from my house. Right. But it's managed. Stephen Donald was the manager originally, yeah. but that's when it went properly. I played under Trevor Galt and Tommy Wallace right. brought me down. Two good friends, they brought me down. I only played it towards the end of, end of a season for them. Yeah, I sort of fell out with Carrick at that stage, and then I came back to Carrick and I went down under Stephen Donald and. A fellow called Stephen McAteer, he's, he's died now. He right. <clears throat> he was assistant manager to the Ducker. Yeah. Um, we had some great times down there, to be fair. It was brilliant. Very, very good. Yeah, and then you're enough. Yeah, well. yeah, I was, I, I was back long. and forward, out league and stuff, so. I, I was 20, I think it was 21, I think, maybe 20, 20, I think it was 20. 20, 21 when I was at Iron McGee, started properly. I've yeah. been off and on there till now, I'm 35 now, so I've been off and on for 14 seasons. You know, you got a testimony yet? I got one a few years ago. We went to Barson, like, but sure. <laughs> there was a few boys weren't happy because I left to go to the Stilly in between the 10 years I was there. Right. But, uh, but I come back the same season, so it still counted. <laughs> well, you're, obviously, you're always coming back there, McGee, so you've obviously had good times there and you find it's a club you've a lot of a, affiliation for. Um, yeah, well, but I, I, only, I only left that time 
went when I went to the Stirling it's because they were in the Premier League at that stage. Yeah. And I had a really good first half of the season and Tim McCann was a manager, Tim and Gary Smith. And they rang me and says, Look, Michael will be March and would you be interested? And yeah. I says, Look, yeah, of course you would. So it went up in January, but only it was only stayed, only played like five or six games and it went leave yeah. it per shoot after three to four months and just the travelling and travelling from Carrick to Lisburn and it was just probably I'll be honest, probably should have I regret probably regret leaving now. Yeah. But at the end it was just like you know, I mean, it was 25, 26, whatever age it was. It was just, yeah, you know, just, want just to play football. Yeah, I just wanted to go back and enjoy where I enjoyed it before. Yeah, was there a, obviously you had that opportunity with Premier Division, but was there an urge? Um, I'm sure you had offers over the years because your time at Ernie McGee, you scored a lot of goals, you were really well for them. Uh, was there ever an urge to go and test yourself again at Irish League level as, as a few times? I had a few offers um, over the years, but nothing really. <laughs> Nothing really that you know, that really, really stood out. I spoke to Bally yeah. Clare, Pace and I. I actually spoke to a pup. The one I regret probably is not coming back to Carrick. When Michael Hughes was there. Yeah. Michael Hughes. Stephen Small was a manager. Uh, yeah. Michael Hughes. And I met actually met Michael and David Hildy. That team, he was a chairman. And I spoke to them twice. And then I finally decided to stay away in McGee. And sure, Carrick went and done the treble that year when the Stadium Suns the heat. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so... But at that stage, whenever they were trying to sign me, they'd lost, basically lost most uh, half their team because they were relegated that year. Yeah. And they lost half their team. So I was thought, looking at them saying, it could be a struggle this year. You know, it didn't, one of them won, at that time, I maybe we had a very good save. Yeah. So I thought, championship one, did, at that stage, in my opinion, to the top of the amateur league, wasn't a huge difference. Yeah. Do you know, I don't think there was at, 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 the, at that time. But obviously, they went on to do the travel and, yeah, the, that's, and that's I actually remember that side of, of a <laughs> good friend right. played for that side, and I remember that uh, we Heatley played off from for about yes, a year. Yes, he did. Uh, he, he, the same from Brantwood, I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And he, and was, he was a massive uh, difference maker yeah, for them. Yeah, because he played for them, played against them actually in pre-season, and destroyed yeah. them, and they signed them after the game, <laughs> from, what, <laughs> from what I remember. It's the way to do it. So it's, ah, why not? Uh, why not? Uh, so your time in Ellen McGee, uh, in terms of... Uh, You've you've been mostly a Premier Division team, or, or have you always been a Premier Division team? No, we were in that time, No, we were in one A. First of all, we got relegated. They no, they lost a load of the no real team. Yeah. We got relegated the year I was there, and then I just so says, "Look, I'll stay." That's before Ducky came in. Then Ducky came in as manager. Then I think Ducky was brought in as an assistant. I'm not can't remember. Yeah, it's that far back. And uh, but then he took over. I think the following year. I'm assigned a lot of players, Andy Reid, Billy Reid, David Harrison. I've signed a lot from Barn, who had just done, I think he had done the double either the year before or the year before that. I can't remember of one A and the Clarence, and they all signed up because they were all friendly with Ducky, yeah. and we ended up we win one A, and I was and the Clarence that year as well. So it was successful that season. Was a, yeah, no, it was very yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Now it got us back into the Premier, and then we established, we established ourselves. We further. Always rang top four, top three, top four, all, like for five or six years in a row. Yeah, it, it was always a strong, looking up back over the last lot of years, Ellen McGee have always been one of the teams, especially going away to Ellen McGee. If, if any team wants to win the primary division, they had to go through Ellen McGee almost yeah. for, well, during seen, that period. I've seen a wee thing in the paper last year, or maybe the year before, I know the Daily Mirror pull out the Tuesday, where Kevin Trainer from Star said this hardest away ground was Ellen McGee. Yeah. And to be fair, we always had great matches with Star over the years. Yeah, they could spice and say it so. Ah, they're class, yeah. aren't they? And then the, the likes of um, our Rangers being around then. Um, well, when, we, when we first came in, it was New England, my C were there under soap. Yeah. I know my big mate, Lee Versailles, for like to mention soap a lot in his, uh, in his interview. <laughs> um, so I just thought I'd throw soap's name in there for him. I give a wee bit more of that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was soap's team with New England. They had a great side. Yeah. Stodden. Do's on all playing for them, very very good. Yeah, and then obviously they progressed on, and it was sort of Star were coming up, and Macalada were coming up, and our Rangers and Ferndy were there as well. Always the teams up challenging. Was there any seasons where you thought you were you was were really close to winning the Premier Division, and maybe just fell short? Or yeah, I think the year it's actually Colin Murphy had tweeted earlier on one of the questions on Twitter. Yeah, 2011 season, we were got the Border Cup final, we got Star in the final. Mm-hmm. Um, we were 2-0 up obviously and 
they they had the Harvey sing song that night in the club about two up and after up. Um, they got beaten penalties that night, and yeah. at that stage it was around obviously Christmas time. I think we were like four points behind our juniors with like seven games in hand or six yeah. games in hand or something, and we just imploded. We lost like five games in the bounce, but but we lost one all season up to Christmas, right. and we lost like five games in the bounce. We ended up lo- ended up coming. I think we were second, possibly third, but only finished like three points off the lead. Like our juniors won that year. Yeah. Ended up, I think we finished like three points behind them. Um, it was just that's the the one season in my opinion we probably should have done the should have done the double. Do you think but, the the border cup loss and the, the manner of the defeat kind of mentally affected the team uh, for a while? Uh, def- definitely, people laugh and say obviously at our level how can it affect me mentally and this, but hundred percent, hundred percent affected us. We should have won it. We should have had it wrapped up. They yeah. scored in the 86th minute to make a 2 8 and then we got beaten penalties. Yeah. And the following Saturday, it was like, that was a Thursday match, or also Wednesday. The following Saturday, we went to Malacans, who would beat seven at home. They could beat 4 0. You know, we beat them 7 1, I think, in the first or second day of the season at home. And yeah. went and beat 4 0. And just with like a couple sent off, with one sent off in the final. And for like four or five weeks in a row, with no team, with yeah. loads of players missing, and ended up. Losing like five in the bounce, that just cost yeah. us massively. And the other thing is, as well, when it comes to cups, also, like when you're leading up that cup final, you're obviously winning league games, you're playing league games. Yep. Boys yep. want to play in the cup final. It, some Sometimes teams would go, No, we're not interested yeah. in the cups. Uh, but sometimes when you have a cup run, it can it can be a good thing or a bad thing both. because yeah. it can go I, I alongside think... and help confidence. People think, oh, I'll go a cup run, I mean, games at the end of the season. But surely come yeah. the end of the season, you want to play games rather than training, no? You know, yeah, look at Look at Starville last year, four years. They were playing Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, sometimes Saturday, Tuesday, Thursday. Oh, yeah. You get that, the you know, I saying in football, you get momentum. It's hard to stop. Like, they're winning, just constantly winning, winning, winning. I, me, personally, I'd rather play Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, rather than train during the week. Yeah, true. I think the you only know? play, players really have is um, hard work it is on their legs or... Yeah. The work thing yeah, as well, work of course, thing, yeah, it can be hard. Most, but most times, realistically, nine times out of ten, you do, you're very early way in the teams and there no players due to work. Everybody seems yeah. to get it off. Yeah, it, it's the thing as well, like the, the Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday can be tough if you, if you have a small squad or yeah. maybe you've nothing to play for, but Definitely. there's something to play for. And like you said, you have that momentum. It, you, it doesn't you affect don't it. Well, it. Not so much it doesn't affect it. You're obviously tired, but if you're, if you're going for league titles and you're playing Saturday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, yeah, you won't feel. In my opinion, you would. You you won't feel it. I don't yeah. think you know. You need to probably ask the star ones. I uh, listened to Joe McNeil's one. He said the same. They come into their own when it sort of came midweek yeah. game towards the end of the season, and it's true. You get momentum. It's hard to stop. Yeah, they're used to it. they've been there for years. <laughs> yep, they have. Yeah, they have. Unfor- unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the amateur league this season, of course, is have just um, leave for Shays has just recently left. Yes. Um, have you got a new manager in this yet? Or? Um, nothing at the moment that I've heard of. I know Sammy Smith has sort of taken interim charge at the minute, um, right. but there's been no official announcement right. of who's coming in or if Sammy's staying on there. Not, not too sure. No interest to yourself going back to player manager? Oh, no? <laughs> One million percent no. I never got his relegate. <laughs> I, <laughs> I didn't want to bring that up, but that way. Oh no! <laughs> that don't worry about that. I'm alright. Like I doesn't bother. I'm I'm I've got thick skin. Um, yeah. although I think first banger and drum and ass were just a lot worse. I also think would have been would have been alright. Yeah. Uh, this season though, you, you obviously have done a lot of preparation, a lot of work before Lee Lee left. So you still yeah. feel confident enough going this year? You're strong enough um, going forward. Well, he took he took five players with him. So, right. So the, the ones, sort of the ones he brought in this year, well, yeah. towards the end of last year and a couple this year, um, if he's the quality player, so they come fault them for asking them to go with him. So, yeah. um, just have to see if maybe get a few extra players in, but nothing, nothing as of yet. But it's hard, as you say, it's hard to yeah. speak to players and if whatever you're doing, like I'm sure Sammy's trying to get players in here at the moment, but it's hard. Like, nobody's going to commit to anything when you don't know what's going on. You yeah. know, there's no point in going and signing three players when. There could be no football the next year. The the thing is, well, the amateur league, when it comes to your primary division, you have a lot of players who would kind of um, maybe move around quite a lot. And it's yeah. trying to get players that, because some players will go because they go with a certain manager. Some players yep. will go because they see that there's a potential to win a trophy. Um, 
or the other thing that people talk about. Some people go for Oops. for a few quid somewhere. Oops, so, a few quid. Um, I'm not sure. But it's, it's going to be hard then because some years you can be competitive and then other years yeah. you might not be. Because it's the same at even normal seasons. You even look at the Championship 1 and Championship 2 teams. Yeah. You see most amateur league teams will get a few players here or there from them. Which yeah. So they haven't even started either. So players don't know if they're in their team, if they're not. So you can't. it's hard to even judge that way. Like you could ring maybe Lauren or Carrick or Ballyclare and see if there's any fringe players wanting to yeah. come and get games. But there's been no games played. So you can't even, you know, it's hard to... Yeah, you've not to get players in at that stage. Yeah, the players themselves same. are probably waiting to see if they're going to get a game. Yeah, even the same at our level, junior level. We used to always start at the start of September, so yep. you'd have been waiting around at the end of August to see if there's any players yeah. who'd been there or there around intermediate teams which are going to exactly. drop out. Now we start at the same time, then it can be a couple of weeks down the line. You're, talk- you're, talking, so. you're, you're probably talking, even if it does start, say, in four weeks, which we all know it won't, you're, then you're maybe waiting another four weeks before you get a chance to sign anybody. Like, yeah. I'm talking about at your level, you know, so it's hard. It's it's even worse now with this um, COVID, like you say, because you don't you don't know and then players aren't going to really commit because they don't know if they're going to be committing to anything. Exactly. You could, exactly. You could put up on your uh, club Facebook or Twitter of saying this player and he never kicks a ball for you because you don't kick a ball for six months. Well, so, that happened with us. So we sang the, we sang the young fella. Funny story for you. And yeah. then again, not long ago, Pierce McVarnock. We right, yeah, signed him from Bangor, yeah. you know Pierce. Yeah, um, name, yeah. We signed him from Bangor, I think. And mm, and a half later, he signed for Belfast Celtic. <laughs> we only put it up on the Facebook page. He trained <laughs> on the Monday night. Next thing, he texted at eleven o'clock on Monday. He's away to, away to Belfast Celtic. <laughs> He's away. <laughs> so, just you know, like that. You know, so oh, as you say, what can you do? Is that you know somebody could say, and next thing, they're like, there's nothing to commit to. Yeah. You know, for me, there's no plan. It's, I find it just baffling. I could talk yeah. all day about the amateur league, but I find it baffling how there's no plan in place. This has been going on from March. Yeah. And so every other league, every other league, at least the Family League's trend, the Elsa League's trend, the Irish League are trend. You know, Amateur League are just sitting there. Just, I don't get it. Like, Rosario and Granada are still waiting on appeals being heard from the end of March. I know. I, I've it's maintained, madness. I've maintained from day one as well that those clubs were entitled to appeal. And it, it, 100%. It, if their appeals had been heard in May, then it wouldn't be an issue. But now they're exactly. kind of being hung out to dry because it's it's been on that's, so long. It's, it's good, but they hear Barry moaning all the time, isn't it, as well, though? Aye, he loves a good moan. <laughs> so he does. <laughs> loves a good moan. I, I, I keep getting retakes out of it, Twitter, but he hasn't bit too much to be fair to him. No, I has <laughs> um, What I was going to go on to now is a couple of questions that I would have for you before we go on to anything yeah, else. Um, no problem. First of all, um, your best moment in football that you would have had? Best moment would have been captain and Eddie McGee to the double that year in 1A and 1A in Clarence, probably. Yeah. Great, great bunch of lads, great management team. We were all friends. It was all like very, very close and it was good. Yeah. And um, we all socialised together. We obviously played together and it was a great bunch of lads and with a good squad. Like, we went to the final that like, We were in 1A, obviously. Yeah. The final was up at Dundella. Oh, well, go. And the Murray Rack, I think, I think finished maybe third or fourth in the Premier that year. They could say, yeah. Like Ricky Rutherford, that was all playing for them. We tanked them four, and like it could have been seven or eight. Yeah. Or eight standing, but there's four or five boys didn't get stripped. You know, that's how good the squad was in them days. Yeah. But probably being captain at such, I think it was 21 or 22, uh, doing the double was good. Also making a first team debut for Carrick, obviously, at 16 was very, very good. Yeah, at that stage, um, with, with uh, Eddie McGee winning the Clarence in 1A, you're, you're still 21 22. You, you think you've all, all ahead of you, but you, oh, uh, you look back now and you realize that some of your best moments in your career were when you were so young. Yeah, it, it's, it is yeah. such a short career, really. 100%. People, like, I've been playing 35 now. I've probably my 20th pre season in senior football. Yeah. And you're just like, you, you look back and like, you feel like that was only a couple of years ago. It's, uh-huh. it's crazy. Yeah, and then you have to, you really have to, when you have these moments, like really cherish them almost when you win trophies because yeah. you never know when your next one's going to be. You no, know, to be fair, we did enjoy ourselves to be a lot, like yeah. a party for days. And I think, I don't even know where my Clarence Cup medal is. I lost at a party that night, I think, somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's on eBay somewhere. Uh, uh, I, don't know, I don't even know where it is. What would be your worst moment in football you've had? Um, oh, the star final as well. Being two up, it's hard to take. 
He's sick now. And then breaking my leg playing for the you Northern know, Ireland international side against the Republic, probably. Um, I think it was 19 or 20, I can't remember. Um, away that we were playing Ireland down, down I think we were playing in Monaghan, actually. I yeah. broke my leg. And it was, I just agreed a three-year deal with the cruise. Right. But I couldn't sign because in them days, if you were playing in the, I don't know if it's still the same now, I think it probably is. If you're playing in the Premier, Premier League as such, uh, you couldn't play for the junior, junior international side. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then obviously I broke my leg, so that fell through. <laughs> I ended up, I was out for 10 or 11 months. I actually broke my ankle and fractured my shin bone, actually, is what I've done. Right. And I was out for like 10 or 11 months. I just ended up staying with Carrick, to be fair. Bill Peden yeah. was a chairman at Carrick then. Bill looked after me well. I was out of work. I was out of work for nearly a year. Yeah. And the team with Crusaders obviously fell through. Um, Alan Dornan, I Alan Dornan was a manager at that stage. Yeah. Still had a grass pitch. <laughs> That's how long ago it was. <laughs> yeah. Was it one of the ones as well where... Oh, we're going to send you, but you may as well finish by playing yeah, well, the junior. Well, as I say, and well, then I come back to it again. I had agreed to send, but I met him and I think it was Alan and Nori Bennett. I think we're in charge then. Yeah. And I had agreed three years. Everything, everything was fine. Contract was agreed. Blah blah blah. And I says, look, I've been selected for junior. So I've played a couple of games. Go down to play Republic. I was saying it was a one of the I don't know what like a championship. It was in Lithuania, I think that year. Right. When you go and play against all the all European games. And like, like two or three weeks beforehand, so that's why I wanted yeah. to go and pl- to play. Obviously, to go hopefully to get to Lithuania, and uh, um, I broke my leg, obviously. Yeah, and then that was it. Deal off. I did. I deal was obviously cancelled, and I stayed a character. Then obviously after that. Yeah. Uh, you've. I would like to ask you a couple of questions because I know. Um, if you don't mind me saying it, you're you're well known through the amateur league for, um, <laughs> you you like a wind up on the pitch. Um, you've had a few run-ins with referees and players over the years. Um, is there any of those times that you've regretted uh, anything you've ever said or done on a football pitch that you've regretted? Um, okay, oh like a wee bit of a wind up now and again, but um, yeah, it's always good, good crack, good but I've never seen. I've always found like a bit of wind up. Um, you know yourself, guy. Yeah. I got, I know I'm hard to stick. I, I openly admit that I'm hard to stick. But I always enjoyed a bit of crack, and some referees even more than players. I like a bit of crack with some referees, but yeah, you can't even have it nowadays. Yeah, you can't even speak to some refs. But what do you do? Yeah, it's it's one of those ones as well where. Um, when you're in a game, you don't really think about what you're saying or doing half the time, and then after the game, the game's over, and then you're just moving on. Whereas some people like to, some people like to hold on a wee bit longer on the things that you may say or do on a football pitch. Oh, I, oh definitely. There's there's been loads of times, there's been loads of times where, um, things have been said or whatnot. But I I always found that, I always found that, most of the time I was happy enough at a partner field or whatnot and then just have a bit of crack in the bar have a yeah. paint that was over and done with but some yeah. players just aren't like that some, you know people, what I mean? some people like to hold it on for a wee bit longer yeah well 100 <laughs> percent. i've played against low gx teammates too and it's yeah. nine times out of ten they're the worst uh, <laughs> no, they're, the, they're, they're the worst ones they always thought they were the better ones because yeah, um, they're probably going into the change rooms as well going I, i'll wind him up i'll get him yeah. sent off yeah that's 100 <laughs> percent. but for me a bit of banter and a bit of wind up in the pits I'd be honest, half the time that got, half the time that sort of, that was my game, that was yeah. half of my game as such, you know. Yeah. I played against several very good players, and it's just to think, well, if I can sort of get in there, you know, you get in their ear, or try and wind them up, or I'm sure some yeah. players maybe said, played against me, get up, mate, get up, Murray's, he'll blow up, he'll get sent off, etc. But I always yeah. find, I always, always like a bit of crack with that about, but sometimes, you know yourself, I right, can spill over. Had a few punch punch ups and whatnot, except in the middle of a pitch and a bit of handbags. But yeah, as far as I'm concerned, in the club after have a paint, it's over and done with. But yeah, sometimes you say it stays on or spills over. Yeah, but part and parcel of the game. It, it is, no, hundred percent, hundred percent. It is. I do find that 
it is part and parcel. Sometimes you maybe say things you regret. You're like, oh, probably shouldn't have said that, or yeah. But I have to take like, you. There's no, I'll be honest. I don't think there's any ground I'd be to where I haven't got stick. So yeah, you know it's water. It's water if it ducks back. Half a time it it rides you up, makes you play better. Yeah, it was one of your questions later. Colin Murphy asked. He said about uh, may as well just ask it now because we've touched yeah, on yeah. it. He said about the hardest away ground you've been to. Is there any ground in particular where you you found it tough going to, or um, is it just as bad everywhere you go? You get stick anywhere. You always get stick up a shingle. Yeah, but. Don't know why that's just because of me or what I am. I'm not too not too sure guy in that way. Yeah. But um, Shankill and Fern, we always got a bit of stick. But tell you, probably the worst a few years ago, the worst stick I got was a way to Darren Patrick. Strangely enough, I don't know. Not too sure what the deal was with a way to Darren Patrick. Yeah. Two or three scenes in a row would just get terrible abuse. Not not even just me. The whole team for some reason. But yeah. I got a lot. I got a lot of abuse from them, which I found. I don't, I don't know what I've done wrong with their Patrick. <laughs> you know, it's, that was, a, that was a strange one to me. It was, yeah, you've no idea what you've done. It's the best thing about yeah, it. Was, I could see through it going to Shankill or going to whatnot, where you get yeah. a bit back and you get dogs abuse. But you know, like say, it was two boys. Uh, actually, one of the questions: Jason Billy and Desi Selfies, two mates of mine, two good lads. Yeah, but they're just two complete wind up merchants. And always slagging a bit of crack, a bit of slagging back. So, you know, yeah. you can accept that, but I don't know what I've done during Paddock, to be fair. It's a strange yeah. one. <laughs> uh, on the pitch, who's the, who's the toughest opponent you've, you've played against? Or opponents as well? Toughest but I used to, can also say. I used to play midfield years ago until I moved up front. Yeah. Um, Joe McNeil was very good for Star, obviously, when I played in Miller Park against Joe. Probably defensively, I always. Always had a great battle with Sean Adams when he was at Newington. Yeah. Years ago. Um <clears throat> Big Chizzy when he was at Friendway, it was always a good hard battle. Um yeah. whenever I was again I was playing midfield then. But probably Joe and Chizzy in the middle of the park were good, were tough. But I, I I it's the games I enjoyed. You know, a bit of physicality, yeah. give or take. And the two the two of them you could kick lumps out of them, but they just kick you back. That's yeah. the way I am. I you know. I don't mind getting kicked as long as people don't mind getting kicked back. I mean, guards, yeah. better give and take. But them two boys never complained. They were hard at two of them, were hard as nails. Always great. But big Sean Adams defensively was very good. Yeah. Great and player. big, to be fair, big Byrne was always tough at the star as well. Yeah. Not the best football in the world, he'll tell you that himself, but it's, it was always tough to play against. Yeah. And then the so next probably, Joe, Joe's like a jurist help on his way. He's just. Uh, honestly, never stops. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think he's. If I think he was drug tested, he'd be he'd be banned for 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 performance enhancing <laughs> drugs. He just runs and runs and runs. Yeah. It's unreal. Yeah, uh, playing in the Premier Division over that length of time, do you, have you noticed as well? Uh, is there been a standard change at any stage? Or see, I've listened to a few of your uh, podcasts, and a few people have maybe said a bit of it. I think the standard isn't as good now as it was. Few years ago, when you had, although saying that the star team now, I would argue they're as good as anyone that's been in the Premier yeah. League, which they probably have. But I played years ago, Kelly Labour winning their, coming to the end of their time, but they were still winning a few leagues. Yeah. Newton and YC were coming in. We were our sales were good side. The Marriott were always up there. Do you know they're always, always good sides. Yeah. But it's hard to judge. But I do think the quality definitely isn't as good now as it was then. That's yeah. my personal opinion. There seems to be a couple of teams just sort of leading away at the moment and then yep. the, the level below that, towards the bottom of the Premier Division. Uh, there's a couple of teams falling off every season now, whereas yeah, that never used to happen. Yeah. It would have been really competitive the way through. 100%, Gary, that's what I was about to say. Every year yeah. you get, there's always one who's massively adrift and then you have two or three who struggle. Whereas yeah. you go back 10, 15 years, you have to be in your A game every week to get yeah. to even get a point, let alone three points. So yeah. no matter where you were going, you were going, it was tough, it was... You know, you had to play well, whereas, not being disrespectful, but you could sort of nearly, the last maybe three or four years, you maybe say, well, look, we should, we'll take six, we should take six points off them. We could, you know, you could nearly, if you're a couple of boys, maybe one book and off a suspension, you'd leave them out if you're going yeah. to play a few of the teams you'd fancy yourselves against. Whereas yeah. years ago, you, you would never have got that, ever. Yeah, every game and then when... Every game we were and then talking your full team available. 
we were talking about maybe week games of, of the likes of Premier Division where it's so tough, you never get a break in those games nope. because it was so nope. competitive the whole way through. Like, even if you were going, like for instance, for us, we're traveling maybe away to Ballinahinch or away to Kelly Lea or away to Cumber, it's on our journey midweek. Yeah. It wouldn't matter how good or bad the teams were doing, you still had to be on your game to get the points. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I want to go on to a couple more of the, the questions just from yeah, Twitter. No problem. Um, uh, my mate Dinger asked, uh, what's your thought on teams paying players in amateur yeah, league? Actually, it's it's a to taboo subject, really, yeah, so it is. I've known Dinger for years, played against him as a Ballyclare, as a Carrick. Dinger's a good lad. I mean, I actually had a wee yarn about it on Twitter not long ago. Yeah. I'll be honest. Everybody, every man their dog knows teams pay players. It's not rocket sense. Yeah. Whether it be travel money, etc. Personally, I, if you're playing amateur football, you shouldn't get paid, personally. Yeah. But, as you say, it's a taboo subject. Who's, who's to know what people are getting or if they're getting anything or if they're not, if they're paying dues, if they're not. You could yeah. argue till the cows come home. Nobody's really going to know all the answers by yeah. the people themselves. Do you want to hear a funny story? It's not, it's not funny, funny, but I was walking through uh, Bow Street Mall in Lisburn on Sunday and there was a guy walking down with his mate past me and my wife and I heard him on the phone and I'm not in the club but he went I they're offering me a few quid they're paying a good few quid it was an amateur league team and I was just like that's just somebody just strolling down yeah I think and you never know who's listening and I wonder if he's got no. listening yes I realize <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know <laughs> but, big, big guy squealed on me at him I, it, but it was just so YouTube. it was just like out, and that's how, but that's how things start to then spread as well, like yeah. because oh, sometimes there can be truth in it, and sometimes there can't be. But like you said, everybody, everybody knows there's teams paying players. So, every let's be honest, I've heard some stories of teams even at your level, Gar. Oh, I there is. I don't, I don't mean disrespectfully your level. No, no, I agree. I completely no. agree. And I hear people getting X amount of pounds, but as soon as you say, who knows what they're getting or yeah. do you know or what it is or at the yeah. end of the day, as I've always said. You're a player, guy. If I come to you, look, guy, I'm going to give you thirty pound a week. You're not going to say, "Look, do you know what? I don't want it." Yeah. Let's be honest. You're going to send for the club anyway. You may as well take them from me. I'm saying, if you're sending for a club and somebody's going to give you a couple of pound, you're going to take it, no matter what yeah. anybody says. Money makes a world go round, unfortunately. Yeah. So it, it's nobody's. There's no right or wrong answer. Or nobody's going to know, and nobody's going to know the whole facts. Yeah. You know? Do I agree with it? No. But do I condone it? Probably not. It's yeah. it is what it is. It's there. It's been there for a lot longer than probably I've been playing football. I know that yeah. for a fact. You know, I have a friend of mine locally. Now I'll not say what club he was at. It wasn't in the game It was yeah. a long time ago. He was getting paid ten pound a week thirty years ago. And ten pound a week thirty years ago is a lot of money. <laughs> Do you know, yeah. ten pound a week he was getting for playing amateur league football thirty years ago. Yeah. Do you know, so it's always been there, guy. Yeah. It's just maybe brought a wee bit more to light now because of maybe it's a wee bit more rife. Yeah. It can be, it can be coming from a team's clubhouse. It can be coming from a rich individual in the yeah, club. but coming from anybody. But that's the thing. Like, it, it's one of them things as well where it's, al- it's almost like you talk about top athletes, like uh, say Olympic athletes, sprinters, taking performance and and drugs you mentioned earlier. Yeah. So you might be against it, but, but you, might feel, you might feel you have to do it to keep up. Yeah. But so, I, would, I would say you go around every club and I guarantee you none of the clubs are paying players. I can nearly guarantee you none of the clubs are paying players. Yeah. Do you say? Doesn't it's probably coming players. from yeah. outside sponsors or yeah. whoever it is. Because I would be very surprised if the actual clubs are paying players. Yeah. So therefore, how can you stop it out? You can't. You, exactly. You can't. That's like, as you guys say you went and won 200,000 in the lottery. I thought, yeah. you know what? I'm going to pay all my four players £30 a week. There's nobody can stop that if you're an outside yeah. supporter. It's, it's yeah. irrelevant. So you're never going to get a right or wrong answer from the situation. Yeah, but exactly. It is what it is, unfortunately. Uh, I've mentioned... Sorry, sorry, well, sorry, one more thing. It doesn't necessarily yeah. guarantee success either. True. Yeah, a lot you of know, clubs have paid people, players and hasn't done think, anything. People think, oh, I'll go to Subject so I'm getting £50 a week. It, yeah. mean, it means nothing. Like, Common Star always said they've paid a fiver a week. Yeah. I'm not one to judge say they have or haven't. So if they are, it makes their success even better. Yeah. You yeah, there's been I mean? there's been successful teams that yeah. maintain and everybody kind of knows they don't pay players. No, hundred percent. I mean, teams have been successful because they have. Yep. Yeah, it's an or it's an good example, and it's just 
it doesn't guarantee success, like you no, said. No, hundred percent, hundred percent. Even you look in the you even go higher than us. Look at some of the championship teams. Uh-huh. You talk about all these teams with big budgets. There's only one team yeah. can win every year, unfortunately. Do you know what I mean? I've been asked as well. I've, I've approached a few players over the years who I've thought are good enough for our level, junior level, and that's why I've approached them. They may have benefited our starting eleven. There's other players I've thought they'd be good for our squad, and yeah. I've approached them, and they're saying, and they're asking you for money. Aye, and you're like, no, no harm, mate, but I don't know where you're getting this, sir. <laughs> no, it's the same. I noticed that a lot last year. Obviously, I was around with 200 players. It probably all yeah. turned me down because they don't like me. That's fine. It's understandable. <laughs> Played against but, um, them. <laughs> it was, like, honestly, they made the players, and I'm like thinking this transcend will do you okay for us. Yeah. And they're, they're just like, oh, well, how much have you got? That was just a conversation finished. Yeah. It's a <laughs> so, grand. There's what it is. Every, it's everybody mental. thinks that they're. And because it is like there's there's players course, as you say because it's so rife it's everybody yeah. thinks well if he's getting twenty quid a week why am I not getting yeah. twenty quid a week yeah and the, mostly mostly ten the players aren't even good enough to get twenty quid a week but what <laughs> no. even it, is twenty quid a week as well like say for example you live in the heart of Belfast and you're getting asked to travel a thirty minute drive away to somewhere and back again just, just, just so you, just so you can tell people it's you get twenty quid a week exactly it's <laughs> it's I've seen it and I've. Obviously, trying to sign players last year, and it was yeah. the same. Unbelievable amount of people said, some search, oh, I'll make easy in the nowhere. Well, it's 10 minutes from Carrick, it's not that far away. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, but sure, what can you do? Yeah, it, it is rife, like we said. Uh, we, we mentioned Colin Murphy a couple of times, a couple of questions he asked earlier. Um, one thing he did ask, I don't know what to say about, um, he said to just throw your quarter cup medals away. Well, I threw mine away, I threw mine away, I knew that. Yeah. I think mine's on the train tracks or somewhere outside CV. <laughs> I don't know yeah. where. <laughs> no, well, it was just looking back. Nobody wants a runners up medal. Let's be honest, guy. Looking yeah. back, I probably probably should have kept it. it was what a great season that year. It was at the end of the day, probably be a bit more respectful. Probably to keep the medal that they, that they gave you. But yeah, you know yourself, the circumstances we lost the game probably didn't help, and it was just. I didn't even want the medal, let alone yeah. keep it. Do you know, I didn't, I didn't want it. And I don't know if anybody else kept theirs. I'd be surprised if, if too many did. But um, mine's on the train track somewhere up there near York Gate Station. <laughs> oh, say to see you. Um, <laughs> I have been asked by a couple of players. Um, I think there was an infamous incident with yourself and a referee a couple of years ago. Um, there was indeed. I, I would like to get your, your insight on it because a couple of people have asked, is there going to be a rematch? So they're, they're, <laughs> I've seen Scott um, McMillan was on asking me for him. You have to do with these things. These things happen. It's prob- a lot of people probably say it's not before time. <laughs> they might be a side for us over the year, but on that occasion, referee was 100% wrong. He was banned for a year, so he's proven to be wrong. Yeah. But it's just a heel of the moment thing. Do you know what? I questioned a couple of his decisions and yeah. he obviously lost it and I was just like, so it's yeah. more, sh- more shot than anything else. It's like, what? Was that actually real? But on the question from Scotty McMillan, I'm waiting on Eddie Hearn getting it sorted because he doesn't want uh, an empty he doesn't want an empty stadium just for the rematch. So I'll wait until all the know, pandemic's over. The pandemic's over <laughs> so we can get a decent crowd and make a few quid, you know. <laughs> Uh, I, w- I want to finish on. Uh, I want to finish on. I want to get those questions done first of all. Um, recently, instead of asking the best players we've been playing with, been asking people uh, the name of five aside team. It doesn't matter what positions, but it gives you an opportunity to name more players because I think yes. a lot of people are falling out with people when they're being left out of teams. So five aside team. Oh, but when you see the tag matches I get after this. <laughs> is it is um, it easier or worse? To, if just to uh, name one person to leave I out say- everybody, or rather than leave out. <laughs> I think it's probably harder sure. to name five because like, you're giving five. Everybody else is like, "Well, you name them five. If you had to name one, they could see through it." I'd be right. <laughs> <laughs> if I was naming one, you know, I would just be like, "Ah, oh, well, I'll just name him." I says, "But you name yeah. a five, you're you're having to go over people." You can have a list of subs. So you can. can I have fourteen subs, or is, it, or is that too many? <laughs> just to keep everybody well, happy. I don't forget. <laughs> Best five. They have to have a keeper. You don't have to. You can have fly nets. <laughs> I've had a couple of keepers who fancy themselves as outfield players, you see. My big mate, David Harrison, would be disappointed if I didn't name him. Yeah. Couldn't have him. He'd be, he'd be sent off every week playing five sides. He's a hatchet man. <laughs> but couldn't have him. We'll go five outfield players. I think the five I'm going to name we wouldn't need a keeper. So right. we'll, we'll keep it that way to keep everybody happy. Good, good. Um, 
probably the best of the best player I've played with, probably longevity and just how good he was was Andy Reid. Yeah. Five sides especially is ridiculous. Like just yeah. ridiculous quality. His feet was scary. He scored from anywhere. I've seen him many a times just turn left backs into the ground, just scary, scary good. Yeah. Should have he's another one. He was at Lauren, I think, for a couple of years, but he should have been playing for Linfield or Glentorn. He wouldn't play for the Glen Sport, he's a big blue man. Uh-huh. But he should have been playing for the Blues. He's he's that good. He was that good, honestly. I'm sure playing with likes of him as well, but then it, for you, especially playing with for a length of time, and you almost knew where, when uh, to make your move. Hundred percent. I played. Like, how many times he set you up for goals as well? Yeah, oh, hundreds of goals. Me and him scored yeah. between us and set up. He was. I loved playing with him. He was brilliant. What a yeah. what a player. So we'll have Andy definitely, and Billy as well. Brother, the three of us played up front. Billy played in the right. Andy was the left. Nice play up the middle. The way we yeah. sort of played them days. And the two of them, the feet, the five aside especially, so 100% have to have the two of them in there. Yeah. Um, so I would put in Simon Moffat. Simon yeah. played with us at Ina McGee. I played with him this season at our juniors too. Just, again, he's another Joe McNeil. He's just a Duracell bunny. Yeah. Just never seen a player cover so much ground. Like He couldn't pass from me to you, Garlic. He would, he would admit that too. But he just worked. You know, he's just so underappreciated for yeah. years, in my opinion. I think he's played for Green Island now on the dinger. Yes. And he's still, yeah. From what I hear, he's still brilliant. He's still doing well. So we'll have Simon and Nurl on Randy and Billy. And probably have Coffee McRae as another yeah. goal scorer. And. Mm, who else will I put in? It's a hard one, guy, to try and think of five without, without leaving somebody else out. <laughs> and. A Baldy Rays, we we'll need to keep the ball we better probably put in Tyson Gray. Right. Tyson played with us for a few years. Again, Tyson played for Glens when he was younger. Played with us for a while at Ian McKee. Only terrible problems with his knees. Yeah. He again he had to play across the water, hundred yeah. percent. So so good. But we'll have Simon to keep the ball. Sorry, Simon to win the ball back, Tyson to keep it and just do our three bits to score goals. Uh, it's to score goals. Then so win, we'll win ten nine every week or well, 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 exactly. They score <laughs> you say they score nine, we'll score ten. So all the defenders and the goalkeepers I haven't left them haven't left you out. Uh just just going to be a bit more attacking. Brilliant. Happy days. Mate, thanks very much for um no problem. up your time. Really appreciate thanks, it. Th- thanks for having me on. Uh I've really enjoyed chatting to you and I wish you the best of luck this season. Um, yes. Same to yourself, whenever, you've whenever got at least another t- 10 years left of football <laughs> so. to be fair I've, I've seen a few more questions there about all this Herbalife crap boys are talking about Herbalife but are winding up so hopefully stick to the Herbalife we'll get another 10 years out of me that's it mate yeah stick to the Herbalife you'll be alright so. <laughs> sure. um, the, the podcast is sponsored by Jumbo Park Racecourse and Learners Ross Driving School once again I'd like to thank Michael for giving up his time thank and you Darren Honestly, wish you best of luck going forward, mate. And Same to you, pal. Thank you. I'll be back with another interview next week. Speak to you soon, folks. Yes, no problem.